Hello, just thought I'd do a video on Simpsons symbolism. Uh, it's a bit out there, but I'll have a look at something. Some of the stuff that's out there is a bit out there, maybe. But anyway, have a look at some... Like a common feature, you'll see Mr. Burns and... Uh, well, The Simpsons is what is not what it used to be. It's gone to, you know, they should have, you know, it's, they should have put the... It's like a horse with a broken leg. They should have put it out of its misery years ago. They just keep going on for money and it's really fallen. The quality has gone from high to less than average anyway. But one scene you might remember, Mr. Burns's house. And he lives on the corner of Croesus and Mammon Street. And there, uh, there's a lot of stuff hidden in The Simpsons, which is especially math jokes. So the early writers uh, were mathematicians and they put quite a few some you know it, very interesting little math hints and jokes throughout the series but uh what's going on here why does he live on the corner of this street and whenever they showed the cutaway to the front of mr burns's house well it's a you know mr burns famous for being greedy wealthy and that type of stuff now croesus and mammon mammon's a name probably most people will be familiar with but uh croesus uh there's also you know some well, uh, you know, they're all clever and they put little hints and stuff in there. But uh, what what do these actually mean? So, first, mammon. Now, that's the worship of money and material wealth. And so that's, uh, you know, to worship mammon is like they say, you can't, serve, in the Bible, you can't serve to, mar like, they don't name mammon in specific, uh, specifically, but it, that's what they're hint hinting at. Now, in Hebrew, that's what, the letter but it translates to riches or, or or wealth so that's what mammon is now you'll see pictures such as this uh you know now some other artwork from dictionary infernal which was this uh especially back during the witch trials uh this was one of those uh works that w was often used to um uh what was some of the other books there at the time i can't remember offhand but they have a dictionary in Fernal was one of these uh, especially used by witch finders and and uh the witch trials and stuff and they show they depict mammon there um mammon the worship of sorry that's the worship of mammon by evelyn de morgan 1909 mammon uh george frederick watts 1885 and you see these uh paintings and illustrations William Blake I rose up at the day at the dawn of day get thee away get thee away prayest thou prayest thou for riches away away this is the throne of Mammon Grey so Mammon is the worship of money and wealth and you know, at, at the expense of everything else which since Simpsons is uh, you know like as um, Mr. Burns said you have to slay you know there are three demons that will get in that you know uh, uh, friends, family, and charity, or something like that. These are the three demons you have to slay for success. So that's like you have know, a uh, talking, well, and that's where this comes from. You know that the the pursuit of mammon will eventually make you very lonely and 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 bitter. So in Centennial Park in Sydney, we have the Federation Pavilion, and oh. Okay, so what you have is there's an inscription around the outside. Now the pavilion itself is actually is filled with quite a bit of uh, information, but well, we have mem on there, and if you were to read that on its own, it would be um, missed. But what the the full inscription around the outside is Mammon or Millennial Eden. So again, it's really it's a it's a hint or warning. You know, what do you want? Do you want wealth or do you want Eden? Uh, the the columns is would appear direct but they're closer to Tuscan which is a reference to sound inside the building itself so there are a lot of actually Masonic symbols uh, faith hope and charity for one are in there there are a hundred one thousand four hundred and forty tiles on the on the ceiling and a quite a you know, it's a interesting little building itself uh, faith hope and charity but uh, so mammon or millennial evil so that's if you read the whole thing. It's not a temple to Mammon. It's actually a warning against Mammon. And but there there seems to be no actual god Mammon back at that time. It's more of a medieval creation rather rather than an ancient deity. Um, now yeah, there might be yeah anyway but yeah but there's lots of so round about the medieval period you know around even the witch trials Mammon was 
become almost godlike, but it was not an actual uh, god. Uh, for instance, Bohemian Grove, that's Moloch, not Mammon, and Moloch was the, uh, a, a deity, um, child sacrifice. So if you've seen the Bohemian Grove footage, they have the cremation of care where they apparently burn an effigy of a baby. And I say apparently because apparently it's a effigy, it's a doll, but anyway, that's something else. And they they are worshippers of Mammon, but the, the the owl there itself is Moloch, not Mammon. Uh, interesting in the Wikipedia article, uh, they detail, where is it? Uh, by 1904, the image was well enough known, it's the image of Mammon. By 1904, the image was well enough known that the Daily Express reproduced the head of Mammon alongside that of John D. Rockefeller, a person of whom the great newspaper greatly disapproved, um, implicitly inviting readers to draw conclusions. Also, this, for instance, you can look it up, but uh, Forsyth thought that Mammon was a con companion to Hope. And if we go, but so inside this pavilion on the ceiling, uh, there's you know, Faith, Hope, and Charity. This you also find at the side. In it's very, it's built into the Christian tradition. So Faith, Hope, Charity, usually referred to as Faith, Hope, and Love. But um, I'll do a follow-up because Faith, Hope and Charity is an interesting thing. Again, because it's embedded also in uh, the Masonic tradition as well. The, uh, the anchor, the heart and the cross, the rosy crosses. Um, and well, there you go, there's uh, Rockefeller. So that's, you know, connected to Mammon. And oh, oops, how did that get in there? <laughs> Rothschilds, Mammon. It's interesting. <laughs> it's it's funny. Okay, it's Croesus. So who was Croesus? Well, King Croesus of Lydia, the regent Lydia was a in you know, ancient times was a, now in Turkey was a, a region. But you also, so you had Ionia, Corinth, as in Corinthian, Ionic as well, and Lydian. As we'll get to that in a moment. But King Croesus was famous for his wealth, and why? Well, the, why? So the coins of the Slater of Lydia, for instance. Um, uh, even after, so, same as some coins from the ancient city of Acanthos, these coins were, which would have, is up, up here, but, um, what was it up there, anyway, in this region, but Lydian coins were famous for a long time after because of their purity, so uh, electrum, so usually when you're mining gold, you'll get electrum, which is a, a an alloy of gold and silver, but the Lydians worked out how to separate gold and silver. So the, the Lydian gold coin was essentially pure gold. It wasn't mixed with any other metals, and that's why it was valuable for quite some time, even like a long time after that period. And also goes to point to the uh, you know, what would be referred to as alchemy or chemistry, metallurgy at that time. And now, for instance, this is a picture of Hephaestus or Vulcan in the Roman. Um, tongue, but Hephaestus was the god of metallurgy, and you'll often see him with these deformed feet. That's be that's a common side effect of exposure to mercury. Uh, not mercury, sorry, um, arsenic. And arsenic, well, arsenical copper, arsenical bronze, if you add, you know, usually, for instance, in Egypt, the copper from the Sinai was high in arsenic naturally. If you mix either bismuth or antimony with copper or bronze, it makes it much harder. Essentially, it becomes a different metal. So when you see these comparisons of soft copper tools unable to, to cut, well, that's not it's not true. Not actually not untrue, but it's you need to specify whether it's arsenical copper or arsenical bronze versus the pure forms, and even recent studies like so the uh, Greek bronze swords and the, their bronze shields were very high in arsenic. It was much stronger metal, uh, at least depend. Well, even the studies have shown that they were they had a, uh, exactly the right amount of arsenic in that they were adding to their metallurgy. They really they were very sophisticated. They knew what they were doing, and we're only really dis rediscovering these secrets now. For instance, Damascus steel. And some other the old um, uh, metallurgy or alchemy, um, we're only really uncovering that now. But there are all these little hints and tips through some of the uh, art forms as well. 
Okay, so Lydia King Croesus. Now, he was also... Okay, Denver Airport. Now, I mentioned Electrum, that uh, alloy of gold and silver. Now, AU stands for gold and AG stands for silver. So that's there um, in the periodic table. That's how you'll see them represented. And that this is Denver Airport. There's a lot of interesting symbolism there as well. Now, because there was, you know, in... in um, Colorado, quite a bit of uh, gold and silver mining, so that might be one of the, probably the most obvious reason. But I suspect it's also a little bit of a hint at Electrum and, well, the rich, the wealth which emerges from that. So, just for, anyway, that's off topic, really. Now, throughout the videos, I mentioned the uh, ancient measure uh, systems of measurement, such as the Doric and Ionic. Ionian is another term for Ionic and Dorian. Pardon, another term for Doric. But, and I did a video a while back, mentioned every once in a while, Phrygian cap, which is a symbol still, for instance, in state and shitty, uh, city shields across America, for instance, a Phrygian cap, which is like the Papa Smurf hat. The Smurf hat is a Phrygian cap. But amongst the musical modes, we also have Lydian as well. And uh, be very, it's one of those things I can't narrow down, but I'm sure, uh, at least it's the... Lydian slate are like 220 grains of, of measure, which is a nice little hint as well, especially in 4D and some of that. Uh, anyway, again, but Ionic, Doric, um, as systems of measurement, but musical modes as well, just like Lydian. And there's a nice little cross there because the Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, uh, there was three different versions, but King Croesus was the... Uh, he donated the money to build the third one. Now, it's often said that King Croesus was a legendary figure, but there his name is actually inscribed. Now, this is a reconstruction because the temple itself is now gone. This is a reconstruction. There's only the foundations of it there, but uh, his name, and it's preserved in a museum somewhere, but the column actually had his name written into the column. And the temple itself is built on the Ionic order. And that's like the ionic columns there. So again, just like Ionian or Ionic Ionian columns. And that's the region of Ionia um, there as well. So, okay. So there's quite a few interesting little bits and pieces, uh, especially in clever shows with clever writers like The Simpsons. They'll drop all sorts of little hints and pieces in there to the extent maybe some, you know, it goes quite far, you know, anyway, if, if you're familiar with the internets, you probably know the other stuff in there, but okay, that's not my field. I'll leave that to others. But also, the, for instance, I mentioned the math jokes. And so there was a book, Simon Singh, a few years ago re released that. If you uh, YouTube search um, Simpsons math jokes, this type of stuff. And now um, today's math joke, I ate some pie and it was delicious today. I'm actually filming this on pie day. And so I... That's an imaginary number, but when I say imagine, it's a very, very important number. I, E, um, sorry, I, the actual symbol is for it is like a italic I, 8, 2 to the third, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That, like reverse symbol, E symbol means the sum of, and that's pi, I, 8, sum, pi. That's what that joke means. And But there goes lots and lots of cool stuff in there, again. So yeah, Simpsons got quite a bit of um, little hints and nods and stuff. And yeah, again, if, especially if you've got a classical education, which sadly we, you know, I didn't get in a state school. I had to get it afterwards, but it's embedded. And there's lots of uh, cool stuff embedded in there. And you know, gather all the knowledge you can. It costs nothing and is no weight to bear, as they say. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that and have a good one.